Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about why trying to be a solo game developer where you do all of the assets by yourself is a bit on the crazy side. The problem with taking on a big project like a game by yourself that has so many different components to it is that it is, I would argue, borderline impossible to become a master at all of the different aspects that go into making a successful video game title. So in order for a game to work well, be a good game, and get sold, you have to have marketing skills on the team. You have to have programming skills. In most cases, there are some engines that try to simplify that, making more of a visual programming style. But to make anything interesting that has unique scripts or anything like that, you would need some programming skills. And of course, one of the big ones, especially for video games, is needing art skills, which could be 2D, 3D, animation, or some combination of those. And the thing about games is that art is usually a really big deal. It's a visual medium, very comparable to something like making a movie. So if your art looks awful, are people going to want to play it? Now there's ways to get around that, of course. You can have a cartoony or low poly game where it's not focused on having high-end, high-fidelity graphics. Which is probably a smart call if you're going SoFo, because creating like a Skyrim type world would be absolutely insane for one person to attempt. Okay, so then there's also sound and music design. Now, there is uh, Creative Commons music out there. I like to go to incomptech.com, uh, where Kevin McLeod has a bunch of really good soundtracks that are useful within your game as long as you give them credit. And then it's also possible to pick up sound effects, though. It's going to be hard to get a good sound effect for every single thing you need to create a sound for. If you're going for the 16-bit kind of thing, there are tools like, I think it's called BXFR, something like that, which is a tool for generating sound effects rather than just downloading sound effects offline. So you can create a lot of different 8-bit, 16-bit sounds with that. But if you're trying to make it realistic or consistent with a 3D world, then you're going to have to ask yourself, how are you going to get sound effects for things like a fire that's burning or a hammer swinging in addition to a sword swinging in addition to a bow firing? And then, of course, there's game design, which shouldn't be underrated because if the idea behind your game is not fun, it's kind of stupid, or it just doesn't work, or maybe it's overly complex, like you have too many menus in an RPG, it can kind of kill your game to have just a poorly designed game, no matter how good the models look or how good your technical programming is in terms of the game's efficiency. Now, in most of these aspects, there are um, marketplaces out there, like Turbo Squid for models, uh, where you can help ease some of the pain of getting all of these things done. But the problem with pulling in uh, a bunch of sound effects from different sources or music from multiple artists or especially different 3D models, is that there may not be the level of consistency you're really looking for there in making a, a visually or audio consistent game. So that's where you're split between two different paths. One is to get outside help, which if you have a real project where it's going to be anything bigger than like a iOS Android game that you kind of pick up and play for a little while but then put down, then it's going to be very, very hard to hit all of those aspects and create a really solid, successful game by yourself. The other path is to have other people working with you, like you bring in an outside artist to cover up for your uh, lack of art skills because you do programming, or maybe you hire someone to create a music soundtrack for your game. Or maybe you know someone who's really good at promoting your game and can help get the word out for a fee. But this video is, of course, about the solo development aspect. So yes, in many ways it does make sense to get some extra help to help cover your weaknesses. But if you try to take on all of those aspects yourself, and you have a project that's in any kind of scale, then you have to really think about how long is that going to take you? Because it's not just programming the game, it's not just doing the art for the game, it's not just creating sound effects for your game, but it's all of those things combined, and of course the marketing and game design too. So one way of thinking about it is how hard is it to master a subject? The commonly thought of rule of the thumb is that it takes 10,000 hours of doing a specific job to become a master at it, so you need to practice 10,000 hours of piano in order to master piano. 
And if you convert that into days, that's 417 straight days of doing that task. And, and that means no sleep, 24 hour days. But if you put that in the form of but if you put that in the form of eight hour work days, that comes out to 1,250 days of work. So obviously at that level of skill, you're probably never going to reach that for all five categories of marketing, programming, artist, sound, music design, and game design. And yes, of course, I'm accounting for the fact that there's going to be overlap there where the skill in modeling is going to give you some clues about how you would actually maybe design the game or program it. But hopefully this is pointing out how if you want to take on a big project like making a successful game and you want to do everything on your own, that it's going to be very, very difficult to actually see success by trying to do everything yourself. And this is, of course, one of the reasons why when people talk about making games that they say you should go for something smaller first so that you don't get locked down in two years of creating the game world and then another year to program it and a year to come up with models to fill the world. Really think about the size and scope of your project and how you're actually going to get things done. So to kind of give an example, the other day I was talking about a developer called Yandere Dev who made Yandere Simulator. Good chance you've heard of him because he has 1.5 million subs on his YouTube account. And he's been working years on the game Yandere Simulator. He's gotten some volunteer help, and from listening to some of his videos and reading his blog, it really sounds like he's working his ass off on the game. But it's still in development. Even after a couple years, it hasn't been completed. And that's with a relatively simple graphics, 3D world that isn't exactly open-ended because it's just one big school building. But even a project like that is really massive for one person to go ahead and try to do. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching. I hope this gives you something to think about if you're thinking of tackling a real game project. And I will see you guys in my future video content.